selfish people are stealing your joy and stealing your success and stealing right. your blessings from you if you choose to hold back on it. This was going through like elementary school up until like the last year of uh, post-secondary. And then yeah. right after yeah. that, like, and I came into the business world and even they, they could, up until now, very few people know I could pronounce my last name. And I'm like, you know what? It kind of pissed me off a little bit because <laughs> you know, this is, and you, you yeah. might relate to this because mm -hmm. there's people out there and it's no offense to those cultures that have crazy like yeah, yeah. Names. Right, right. they know what it, they other people they'll they will put the effort in to pronounce their name and last name me okay. oh I, no clue no clue how they to just give that. up people just give up. up when i saw in school i would get anxiety about it so i actually started after a while to go up to the professor or the teacher before class started to yeah. go over that whole pronunciation thing but when i was in school when i saw you start to look like confused or like I don't know what I'm doing here I'd be like that's me like I, I just, you know, and it was sad I just got into the position where I'm just like present you know but I mean it is what it is but yeah but it's, I it's, totally it's, understand that I know this it's is frustrating going against, it is but I know this is going against the podcast but this is actually quite an interesting topic because at okay. the end of the day it's that I guess in the beginning and we have to really look at it saying that guess what this is who I am right my identity yeah. is tied yeah. into my name yeah, exactly. And then now, like as us, we and again, we did the same thing. We kind of, um, I'll say, downgraded our, our identity, part of our right. identity, by making right. it easier for other people. So when they see us, you're just Daisy, not Daisyana. Exactly. It's yeah. part of the, it's, it's, it's a disrespect, in my personal opinion, that we no, put definitely. upon ourselves mm -hmm. because we just want to make their lives easier. Just like, and that's why I kind of hit that switch. I'm like, no, it, this, this is my parents' legacy in a sense. Right, right. And now we are, if we're going to downgrade it because one, the other person that we're talking to is either A, too lazy to pronounce her or last name. Right. As us, we're too, we're just too kind. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's just like, it, then it's, it, it begs a different question, you know? Yeah, yeah. For me, it's definitely tied into the whole people pleasing syndrome thing yeah. where I don't want to offend anyone, even though they're offending me by not even trying exactly. to get my name correctly. But I remember I went to school in more of a, a like a, a urban demographic with people mm -hmm. who related to me culturally and ethically and spiritually. And then I had moved to an area that was um, different and they had more diversity. And so I went from being Daisyana in this one area to moving. And the teacher on the first day was like, well, your name's just too hard. So do you mind if we call you Daisy? And from there, I was like, that was second grade. And I had been Daisy through every school system after that, because I was just so embarrassed. I became embarrassed and shy mm -hmm. of, you know, like you were saying, like my own legacy, right? I was actually named after my grandmother. Her name was Daisy, but my dad wanted me to be independent and be my own person. So he added the Anna in. That's a powerful story and testimony about, you know, exactly. trailblazing and resiliency and overcoming and independence and all these things. And I shied away from it for such a long time because it wasn't the norm and it didn't fit into someone's category or box of where they felt I should be in. So, yeah. <laughs> this I has just nothing. Keep <laughs> just keep going. Just keep going. I, to me, I lo I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. this <laughs> and this is, again, this is why I prefer this style of a podcast. Because, okay. one, it's a conversation. And none of right. this, if I had a bunch of questions or you said, hey, <laughs> ask these questions, these questions, none of this would have came up. And then, right, again, right. we have no, we've never met ever. No. But yet, we have, <laughs> we have, we became people pleasers over the time based, right. of, our, our, based of our names. This is right. actually quite interesting. I like this topic. I thank really you. Like thank you. It's, I do too. Thank you. It's that it's, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I don't care. It's hit record. <laughs> okay. Um, let's I'm do gonna, it. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I would like to add this to, to, let's to do uh, it. Our thing. Excellent. It's Absolutely. the fact that like, again, it's those labels. And I think it's, right. we have our labels that we place on people and it's right. maybe, and again, it's, it's like you said, you, you went into a different culture where they couldn't pronounce your, your, fir, your first name of all right. things. It's your first name. Right. right. Mine's my last name. <laughs> and it's just right. like and then again it's taken away that identity in which from heritage this is your legacy when your parents saw you at, at from birth or even prior to birth they they had something in their mind to name you this is your name right. and then i remember i'm start thinking about a little shakespeare when it says about the rose if a rose was never called the rose would it still be a rose 
Mm. And that and that just played in my mm-hmm. mind just now. If you yourself choose to just stick with Daisy instead right. of Daisy Yana, right? Would you still be Daisy Yana? Oof, that's good. No, I, I I don't feel that I would be. And and ironically, when I decided to start going by Daisy Yana again, it was during this whole like rebirth period that I had in January, 2020, right? Where I decided not knowing obviously COVID was gonna happen and jobs and all these other kind of things. Um, but I decided like, I'm no longer going to live in fear. And I think the fear that I had or the perceived fear that I had, which is so, it's so big, but it sounds so minuscule was that if I start going by Daisyana, um, people are gonna think that I'm problematic right? There's this whole name thing now where people are like, well, don't give your kids too hard of a name because, you know, what about jobs and what about this and what about that? But there's so much culture and history tied into why we're named what we're named. And like you were saying, you know, would we be who we are today without that? Would I be who I am today had my my parents gave me a more common name or something I could find on a shot glass or a keychain or something like that? You know, would I still be the same person and I don't think I would and I've become way more grateful um my grandmother who uh I was named after she's passed on now but I I often think about that and I'm like how fortunate am I because that's not even common um common anymore you know to name your kids after relatives and things of that nature but I look at her life often and I'm like wow that resiliency that she had she thought enough of me to give me a piece of her Mm. and how could I even though I was partially using her name, but how could I deny myself her? How could I, how could I deny that part of myself, you know? And every time that I would respond to Daisy, which there's still a ton of people that call me Daisy. And sometimes I'm like, just call me that because it's easier. But, um, you know, how could I deny myself that? And then now that I go around and I'm in Hawaii, uh, you know, I'll go around and I'm like, oh yeah, actually my name's Daisy Anna. People are shocked right because it's a different culture and people go oh my god your name's so beautiful your name's so this and it's so much love from a name that I didn't have for about 10-15 years and I thought that there was something wrong with me right and there's nothing wrong with me if you can pronounce Stace Galova and all these other kind of names and stuff you can definitely pronounce mine it's just a matter of whether you find that to be something suitable for you or not and you're making the conscious decision sometimes to get people's names wrong because it doesn't fit into your category of importance. But um, best believe now, when I walk into a room, it's going to be a different level of respect. Don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to correct you every time you get it wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I love that. It really is that taking back that power because even with like, my name is simple, just David. Right. People call me Dave, and I'm just like, that's not my really? name. You didn't and I'm try. Just, and it's not, it's not even like, it's just lazy. It's just like, it's one. I You gave up. Is, that's it. You just gave up halfway. And I'm just like, and I think about it. And I'm just like, and I said to one person, and it's funny, because there's another guy in, in the room with me. His name was Dave. And, then, okay. and they're like, oh, look, there's two Daves. I'm like, no, no, no. There's a difference. Right. Dave can never be a David, but David can Hello? be a Dave. <laughs> You better tell somebody. <laughs> That's good. Put some Everyone just on my looked name. at me, just like, "Oh, you are right." I'm like, "Yeah, buddy." There's a big, okay. big difference. So the Absolutely. guy, which was funny, the guy Dave, he looks at me. He's like, "Guess what? You are right." But guess what? Because my name is Dave, that just makes me one unique. That no, no one would ever call me David, but they can call you Dave. Oh, I'm like, you oh, bastard, geez. right? <laughs> I mean, touche. <laughs> exactly. But I got him back. I'm like, just remember, there was a, a guy in the Bible called King David. He wasn't called King David. He just you, like, he looked you know at me, he's just like, bow. He just said, <laughs> bow. <laughs> he's like, trump card. You got it. <laughs> I, you win, obviously. I can't. There's no king after me, you know. But it's yeah. going back to what you said. It's that It's that legacy factor. My parents, right. when, they, when they saw him, like before I was even born, Right. They, they said, hey, again, they, they are on, on the religious side, but they call me David because of King David. And if, right. if you realize what David means, it means um, love by God. Right. And if you take that away, now you're showing this Dave is just, what is that? It's not, it's right, not right, right. biblical anymore. It's not right. spiritual. It's not, it's, you right. take that away. I understand the factor of a daisy in a sense. Yes, it's a flower. 
but daisy mm -hmm. makes it even better than a flower Thank i don't you. know i don't know honestly i don't know what the meaning of daisy is there is none i'm the only yeah. daisy in the world as of now that i know yeah. of so yeah so even that, it makes you it makes you unique right thank you yeah so that's why that's why i mean like and that's why it's important to for people just be like if this is my name Right. this is my name there's a reason why this is my name right and you know something that I recently started um because I do life coaching and things like that within my my business structure but um something that I've been more talking about regarding the mental health side and also the life coaching side is it's okay to take up space and mm -hmm. I think what I realized or what I'm looking at now is that when I was going by Daisy it was because I didn't want to rock the boat right? I didn't want to shake things up. I didn't want to be looked at as different or an other. I wanted to be able to go into a gift shop and see my name on a keychain. I wanted to be like everyone else with a common or more common name because I didn't want to feel like an outsider. And now that I'm growing up and, and you know, getting older and things like that, I'm starting to realize that there is power in being a one of one. There's power in looking around and no one else looks like you. There's power in entering rooms and you're the only one there that looks like you, that thinks like you, that talks like you and walks like you. There's so much power there. Um, and in trying to be like everyone else, we're really dwindling down our own power and our own uniqueness and our own individual individuality. And I just no longer care to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful and going back to what you said is that walking in the room um i remember walking into a boardroom and literally everyone didn't look like me and right. i say that based off of color and even the age i was right. i was unique when i walked in there and i was 24 or 23 mm -hmm. around that time and i walked in and i'm in this big meeting with a lot of uh, bright bright people and right. the first thing i was like do i even belong here and right. the first thing that came into my mind, and um, I love my manager. Uh, he looked at me, he's just he looked at me, and he's just like, "Don't be scared." <laughs> he, I guess he oh. could feel the presence of my <laughs> right, face. right, right. Like, That's There's awesome. a reason why you're like I believe in 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 your intelligency, and right. it's nice to have such a mentor in your life. Even if it was just my boss at that time, um, right? He literally just put me in this position, saying, "Hey, don't worry about it. You you know your stuff already, so why worry about right. it?" And I, I just, I, for the first, and that was my very first time being in a conference room um, with right. a lot of people in it. I'm just, I didn't have to speak at that point. It was just like, oh, just, just, it was just for your information. And this is right. why um, you're there. And just like, it's good to actually be in these, in, um, these environments. Therefore, again, people know who they're going to, who they're talking to, who people are going to see, who's the next person um, that I'm going to put um, in charge after I, I retire. Um, right. So going from that first day, I remember um it was like two years or three years after I was actually in a co another conference room and I was running the conference room and again Ooh. I looked around and nobody looked like me no one was right. was you're my age and I'm telling them hey this is how you could save money and now I'm talking about finance and stuff like that <laughs> and they looked right. at me was like okay this kid is smart but right. again it's like I'm up there and I'm nervous because again nobody looks like me at all right like, at right. all and right. when it was said and done, the, the company evolved over the years. And now when I go in there, you see that multicultural, which is great. You see that uh, the different age in, in through the, uh, throughout the employees, which is great as well. But again, I feel like in that uh, moment, when I look back on it, it was me setting, setting the, 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 I'll just say starting at the base, setting the tone right. and, and the first person. I set that right. up for a lot of people because again, right there and then I could have switched. I could have been nervous. Right. I could have ran out. I could have, I could have done a lot of things that could right. have messed up people from down the road. But again, Absolutely. it's that taking that ownership and that pride of who you are right. and who you are is a name that your parents gave you. Who you are Absolutely. is the experience that you've gone through from day one up until that point of that moment that you have that chance to shine. Um, Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing. They always, again, going back to biblical reference, it always says, let your light shine so it could show the world. Absolutely. And when, you, when your light within you shines, then people are drawn to you. Right, right. right. And, it's, and it's, it's the craziest, you know, occurrences when things like that happen, right? Because especially being in rooms, um, the word escapes me now, but there's a, a mental health term for what you're describing as your experience. 
of where we can be the most educated, we can be the most intelligent, we can be all of these amazing things and qualities and characteristics, but still feel underqualified for the job. Oh. And when you walk into a place, you feel like, am I actually meant to be here? Do they know? You kind of feel like a, it's not, so the it word impossible. isn't fake. Imposter that, syndrome. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you so much. I remember, remember, like, I think I that, one. <laughs> that was perfect. That was great. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's called imposter syndrome, right? Where you can have all the information and things like that. But when you walk into a room, sometimes you just won't feel as if you're measuring up. Um, and that's something that's actually biblical as well, right? Because I know they talk about I'm thinking First Timothy, where they're talking or describing about like being, you know, young and a child and things like that, but not being afraid because mm -hmm. the world needs our youthfulness and things of that nature, right? So sometimes we're walking into these meetings and I've, I've been very fortunate within my career and things like that to never be someone who's like, mm, that job's beneath me. I'll take the job and then I'll be able to network and, you know, build upon that and stuff. But I also think that has a lot to do with with my identity, right? Because a part of that, me figuring out what Daisyana means or what it means to be that because no one's told me the structure for it and I can just be whoever I want. Um, but, you know, it gives me that, that accessibility or that freedom to walk into places where I may seem scared and things like that and just kind of take it all in and then walk out with more connections and networking opportunities than I had before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just be able to learn and grow within, within my field. And, and it's such a beautiful experience, you know. It is. And, and going again, going, I love how this is going back to like the Bible. And such. <laughs> I, as soon as you thought that, as soon as you said that, I wasn't thinking about uh, in Timothy's. I was actually thinking about Genesis with Moses and, and how um, when he was scared, Moses was scared to even talk to Pharaoh. And God right. was just like, listen, I'll, I, I knew you from, from, from birth. I will right. give you all the all the words and just just trust in me, right? Right. And I say that, and I and and yes, it's a biblical ref, reference, but it is a nowadays, um, um, I'll say, teaching as well. It goes mm -hmm. with, and if you don't believe in God, it's it's that it's you have to trust yourself. Absolutely. And I've, I've said this in my previous podcast before um, when someone was talking about communication and stage fright. Um, I remember one. I'll just go back on it and whoever listens to this might get sick of me telling the same story but it's okay <laughs> um it's a, it's just a fact that hey like i remember when i was, I was doing a uh, presentation in grade seven or grade eight about julius caesar and i had cue cards in my hand and i'm looking down reading the cue cards and my mm -hmm. teacher comes up to me he looks at me he's like did you do the homework and do the research i'm like yeah i did it and and it's my research he's like right. so you know the material i'm like yeah i know the material so he grabbed the cue cards ripped up in front of me and oh. threw them in the garbage He's like, if you know it, oh, then you're fine. Oh, I, okay. I, I went like cold sweat. And, and then, but something snapped in me right. and I kept on, I talked and I was walking up and down the aisle, hands free, waving around, telling about what Julius Caesar did and stuff like that. And That's the verb, incredible. the words just came flowing through me. And right. after I was done, everyone gave me a clap teacher looked and was like was that so hard i'm just like no it wasn't it's a fact that right. he looked like it's a fact because you did the work you right. have to trust yourself and it starts with Absolutely. an internal belief and right. it goes again with the name it goes with if you believe in yourself everything that you are and were and your goals that you want to achieve you you will get right. there you will, right. you will eventually you'll get there i'm not saying you'll have that magic moment like i did with the automatic switch because right there and then I could have froze, I could have broke down, I could have ran away crying, I could have done something. Right. But something in me just said, hey, just take a chance. Just honestly, right. just take a chance and go ahead with it. So Absolutely. I, um, I actually have a similar story, but mine is more, um, more spiritual based or Christian based or, or however. Um, when I moved here, you know, I didn't really tell that many people. Um, I told maybe five five people and I know a lot of people right I do martial arts so I have a whole martial arts family and I well you know so I had a I was fortunate enough to have a lot of communities that really loved and really embraced me right and I always say before I left Los Angeles I was at the peak and if you looked at my life from the outside you would be like why the hell would you move to Hawaii where you don't know anyone you're going by yourself you don't have you don't have the cushion and the security of your hometown experiences right um, and you'd have to get reestablished. 
And something just told me that my purpose and my higher calling was to be out here. I don't have the whole roadmap. I don't know what it looked like. Every day looks different, if I can be completely honest. But I knew that there was something more for me here. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I'm, I'm a very move in silence kind of person, right? I'll tell a few people, but I don't really, besides God, look to anyone else for validation anymore. It just takes up too much time. It messes with my anxiety. I don't have time for that, okay? So recently, um, you know, I've been here now for a month and things are definitely different for me. I was able to get established. I have friends, I have a job, you know, stuff like that, but that wasn't always the case. So when I first moved to the island, you know, I have this idea of how it was supposed to be because I was romanticizing what life would look like here. I was going to get off the island and they were going to be playing somewhere under the rainbow on a ukulele somewhere in the airport. I was going to get a lay put on. It was going to be great. Okay. Um, and then that wasn't actually what happened. What happened was I missed my initial flight. So I was out of the 72 hour thing that you need to have for a negative COVID test. So I get to the island, I'm immediately put on a 10-day quarantine. Now, I only had the hotel room that I had booked for two days because sis couldn't afford to stay there for 10 days, okay? Mm. So in my head, I was like, okay, well, we're going to have to make this work somehow. I'm on quarantine through a crazy series of events. I end up uh, meeting my now roommate and stuff like that. And then, you know, life settled down for me. But there was a moment where I thought that I would be homeless. And there was a moment that I share on one of my IGTV videos, which is kind of the point of why I'm saying all this, where I had to be completely vulnerable. I didn't know what other people would think about me before I made this live about talking and crying on camera about the fact that I, you know, I'm, it's a sad scene, right? I'm walking outside of a hotel room because I know I can't afford it. Um, I'm walking and I'm looking straight ahead of me and I'm praying and silently weeping to myself and I'm looking ahead of me and I'm like, well, I have three options for where I'm going to sleep today or tonight. And they all are outside. I can sleep outside by this bush. I can sleep by this hazardous sign, or I can sleep by this empty storage container. I don't have any other options because I, I, that's where I'm at right now. Right. And so I had this, this happen. And then, uh, miraculously, well, not you know, I believe in miracles, but not coincidences, but miraculously, even though I couldn't pay for the hotel room, um, an employee that was working earlier that day saw me and she had called the security guard who had just kind of kicked me out of the hotel um, because I couldn't afford it. She had called him and said, tell her to stay in the hotel like lobby and tell her to wait for me. And then I came back and I found out that she actually paid for my, my stay there in the hotel. And I had no idea that that was going to happen, right? So the next day, I'm, you know, obviously in awe of God and his blessings for me and things like that. And something told me to record it and document it and put it on live, right? I'm not very vocal all the time. I'm not very transparent. I'm not very um, vulnerable with social media because we're in the day and age of oh, you're on social media, so you have to have, you have to make sure your life looks like you have it all together, mm. and this was a moment where I'm at my lowest, or I feel I'm at my lowest, and I felt like I was having a moment where I'm like, Lord, why did you forsake me, right, and everything turned out for the betterment of, of the situation, but at the time, I had no idea, so I get on live, and I'm recording, and I'm, I start crying and sobbing, and I'm even like, guys, I need a minute. Just give me a second. Like, girl, you put the live on. What do you mean you need a minute? Get, the, <laughs> get it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm, I'm having this moment, and I'm just like, wow, this is, this is where we are. And that live that I did got more views, more engagement than anything I've ever put out, and it's all because I was deciding to trust God. And that's the one thing that I've had to do consistently since I've been here. I don't have the comfortability anymore of just knowing my way around town or being able to just get up and go. Um, I always laugh. There's a song out called, you know, like, she's a runner, she's a track star. That's how I deal with my, with my emotions, my mental health, my spiritual health, all of that. Whenever I don't like something, I run. Well, I can't run. Where are you going to go, sis? It's a whole island. You're surrounded by water. Where are you going you gonna to swim out? You're not going to wet your hair. Stop playing, you know? So, <laughs> so it's a whole thing now, right? And so I'm having to, you know, cons consistently uh, deal with the fact that in this season of my life, it's really me versus me, me versus my old ideals, uh, ideals and ideologies, me versus 
how I used to pray versus how much I need God now more and how I have to pray now, you know? So it's all these different things. Um, and the journey has definitely shifted for me. But I think uh, in that moment, I was, that was a calling I had. The calling was, hey, why don't you talk about this on, on social media? Because everyone seems to think that you have to have it all together. Here's your experience and your testimony of not and you're able to be vulnerable and honest. I have grown men still DMing me like, girl, that was so sad. You know, like, <laughs> that's crazy, you know. <laughs> Nothing wrong with men crying, but I'm saying like, you know, these are some real, you know, these are people that I wouldn't expect to uh, have those types of feelings about something that I've been through. Or, girl, if I was you, I would have been left. I don't know how you're doing it. You're so brave. <laughs> I, 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 you know, like, that's crazy. Why are you still there? Ah, you know. Um, so it's definitely been a journey, but like I said, during this time, I've had to rely a lot more on God and what he's calling me to do than Daisyana and what she feels the need to do, hmm. you know? So, yeah, that's that. That is, uh, <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Thanks. Um, Thank so it's funny that you mentioned fear because, again, this is going back to a few podcasts. So I've learned two acronyms for fear. And the first okay. one that we always know is forget everything and run. Mm -hmm. And that seems like what you mentioned uh, with your song yeah. that, that you're going with. The yeah. other acronym, the other ac acronym that I heard was "face everything and rise," and it looks yes. like this is what you're you're slowly transitioning mm -hmm. to, which is yeah. which is fantastic. And then you yeah. mentioned a few things of, as well. It's um, when you got out of the hotel when they kicked you out. All you said right. to yourself was, "I'm going to look forward and keep looking forward." Yeah. And I mentioned and I and I spoke to a previous person before you. Well couple of days ago, well, yesterday, um, Tim, uh, he mentioned the same thing, something that he, he beats into his, not physically beat, but like right. pounds and, and to his kids is that when you fall, you have to keep rising. Right. And at the same time, when we're talking, we also realize that we go by the same thing in the sense that no matter what, always go forward. You always Absolutely. have to move forward, no matter what, what circumstances you are, you are in. The biggest right. thing and the best thing to do is keep moving forward because you don't know the outcome. And Absolutely. then I love the 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 thought the um, analogy that he that he presented to me. He's just like when you drive a car, which do you look through the front window more or do you look through the rear view window more? And mm -hmm. he's just like I'm just like yeah through the front. And he's just like right. that's correct because if you kept looking in in the rear view uh, mirror, you're gonna crash. Right. Almost like, oh, and I yeah, thought about them. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. You are absolutely right. right. He's just like, that's why you always face forward. The only absolutely. time you look back is just to reflect, but it's a quick reflection, but it's, it's a quick, you keep going forward. Almost like absolutely. that is very true. And so, I also wanted to, I, I apologize, no, um, but I, I also wanted to point out to, I wanted to make it uh, very, very clear and very known. Um, you cannot get anywhere in life well, first without God, but second without a good solid support team. Now, mm -hmm. if I would have just up and left by myself, didn't tell nobody, you know, that would be maybe I feel a bit more brave or, or however you put it. But I have solid people in my life who support me and uplift me and pray for me and, and want me to succeed and do well. And um, so I definitely wanted to put that because you know, a lot of people think that you do these journeys and you live out your purpose and stuff for free or for, you know, by yourself, completely, you know, fearless and by yourself and alone and blah, blah, blah. And I'd definitely be lying if I said that that was, that was where I was at because I actually, um, I was living with my best friend before. And I said that, you know, living with her was literally the best year of my life, right? Um, and I've never, I'd never been happier, but I knew that I was hitting my peak and I knew that I was rising and then I was just going to flatline after a while. Like had I stayed in LA, there was nothing more that I could learn in this season there, right? I had gotten used to my routines and used to, you know, kind of conforming or having everything, being comfortable and being complacent. That's where I was. And when I found out that when I got to the island that I had to quarantine, I called my best friend crying because first I, I, I wrote a book and it's a mental health and wellness prompt journal. But one of the quotes in there says, first I cry and then I thug it, right? Mm. So I'm like, I'm a crybaby, right? So I will, if something don't go my way and I'm the youngest, oh no, I, I am spoiled. So when something don't go my way, I'm like, eh. and then we gonna figure it out. But first I got to let it out, right? 
So I called her crying and I'm like, girl, I'm going to get back on the plane. Like, I think this is what God wanted for me. I think this is what he wants. Like, he, you know, he just wants to see if I could make it out here. I made it. Woohoo. I'm going home. And she was like, <laughs> girl no she was like no because you know you believe that this is what God's purpose is for you and you know she was really just sowing into her into me her and my my older sister chrysanthemum flowers and my mom is the whole thing um but you know she told me yesterday she's like oh girl you know my best friend she's like oh girl I'm so happy you know everything is looking up for you because it took everything in me to tell you to stay there and not to come back home because no matter how much I miss you and no matter how much I love you and I want the best for you, um, I, I want you to be back here so we can go back to being best friends and having all this fun and stuff, you know, but she's like, but I knew that your purpose was greater than, than what you were currently doing. And I knew that you being out there was going to help you reach that next level. So it's so important and I cannot stress it enough to have people that support you and, you know, not just the friends that you have or the support system you have that can uh, embrace you and love on you when times are good, but the ones that can sow and feed your soul when things aren't going so great, you know, because those are the ones we really, we really, you know, have to thank God for, right? Because um, imagine if she was just like, girl, I told you not to go out there anyway, bring your ass back home, you know what? Like, <laughs> you did it woo you know like imagine if she was that friend but instead she was able to take herself and her comfort out of the equation and say you know what this is what's going to be good for her I say go for it and she needs to be out there and stay there you know so shout out to her and shout out to my sister y'all are dope <laughs> and I, I, I'm loving this conversation because this is you're hitting a lot of what I like to say golden nuggets and you're right, because you have to have a true support system with you right. when you're going through those tough times. A true support system means someone that's always going to, one, knows what your goals and dreams are right. and pushes you towards that. Right. Those people, and I, like, I understand they're, they're like best friends, good friends, wherever they might be. Um, mm -hmm. they, at the, like you mentioned, they want you to come back, especially when you move. Right. So. And, and, they, and it's great. And at the same time, they you have to have that that it's two-sided because one it's you create a great bond with these people and right. therefore they have this selfish um and selfish in a good way um mm -hmm. that they don't want you to leave and be out of their life because they might feel like once you leave the environment or the or the vicinity around them that things right. are going to be different and and you you will you will you will be talking less to them and so on and so forth right but the biggest thing is that you have to have them in two ways. One, they can be selfish, which is great, but they also have to be able to push you to get to be better and greater than what you were before. And when you reach that goal, then they can be selfish and say, hey, bring me along with you. <laughs> right, right. Come on, girl. Like, exactly, I tell her all right? the time, I'm like, you just need to move out here and stop playing, you know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And the other thing that I love this conversation about, because um, it's the touchy subject, which is quite interesting, is that we both mention um, the divine power, which is God, God Himself, right. in in this whole podcast, and a lot of people are just like, "Well, these two people," and which is pretty funny, though. I'm going to say this. I again, this <laughs> talking about it, uh, it's a fact that they see two black people telling the truth. Right. First thing right. is thinking about, "Well, these people are Christians." <laughs> right. <laughs> of course, they believe right. in God. Right. No, it's, it's, despite despite all of that, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the things that you mentioned. And this is the difference. And again, a lot of people will disagree with what I say. I, and I really don't care. It comes down to how dedicated are you to God? And how right. dedicated, and if you don't believe in God, it's how dedicated are you to something that's higher than you? Right, right. Because at the same time, as, as you mentioned, and, and a lot of things that, and um, I remember in the Bible that says, um, we have to have a fervent prayer. And that fragrant right. prayer, it, it means really a hot, a hot um, prayer, something that will penetrate the, the mm -hmm. flesh and go really, and you're using your spirit to talk to God. You're, you're in your, you're, you're, it's your soul, it's your feelings, your emotions. That's when you hit that fragrant prayer. And right. once you do that, I believe God starts talking to you, i.e. a divine power starts coming down and, and, and working those uh, working in your favor whether it could right. be again uh, um the 
energy around us. It could be karma itself, mother nature, whatever people want to call it or whatever they, they right. decide to uh, call something that's higher than them to work in favor for you. And that's what I think a lot of us fail to do at times. Right. And it's unfortunate to say this because I know we, and I say a lot of people, um, very few people actually pray or, or, or have faith in something until something, something bad happens. Wrong. Yeah. And yeah. when that happens, then they find deep down that something deep down within themselves to actually reach out. So imagine right. if we did that constantly. Right. Right. Imagine, and imagine what state we would be at that point. Right. And there's so much power in that because like I was mentioning before, you know, I've never, I've never prayed this much in my life. I've never felt that much of a connection to God. I think it was more so I believe because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Especially in communities of color, you know, the first thing that they tell you is like, oh yeah, you got a problem running God. And you're like, what does that actually look like for me? Mm -hmm. And no one actually gives you that, that answer, that response. And so these big leaps of faith that I've been taking I had no other choice but to depend on God. You know, I'm in Hawaii now during, during, during quarantine. I can't just pick up the phone and be like, hoo hoo girl, come help. Like, no, ain't nobody here but God. You know what I'm saying? So um, a lot of things that I had to, to witness or a lot of the strength that people see in me is just really because I've been like falling before God and being like praying like, like weeping, like quietly weeping. And it was crazy because during the, um, during the moment I had described before where, you know, I'm walking outside and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to sleep by this hazardous sign or outside in the bush or whatever, whatever. Um, I was praying and, and silently weeping or whatever. But all of a sudden, before I saw the security guard, this gust of wind rushed by me and I felt complete like peace and I felt like my like my it's crazy to describe but I felt like my my soul was just like refreshed yeah and remember I was just you know I'm a hyperventilator crier when I'm upset right so I'm like uh, you know all the emotions I'm trying not to get into a panic attack but that gust of wind you know washed by me and I felt so um comforted and so safe and so you know secure and I didn't know what was happening and so a friend of mine on my live described it as Moses in the burning bush, right? Oh, and yeah. that was my moment. And I was like, wow, that is so crazy, you know, but it, it's signs like that. And um, I believe it was Malcolm X that said, man who falls for nothing or stands for nothing falls for anything. Mm -hmm. And even though he himself wasn't, you know, Christian or whatever, um, it's so true, right? Especially in today's times, so much is happening in the world. You have to have yourself anchored to something like because the way I see it is everyone's out for your attention, especially with social media, especially with ads and TV and all the media and all this stuff. Everybody's out for your attention. So if you're not harnessed in, you're just going to go where the wind goes, you know, and that's not safe or comforting at all. And so I found so much strength uh, for myself and so much comfort and so much love and warmth in the relationship that I have with God, but it didn't get real for me until I moved here because I was doing everything as a dutiful Christian was supposed to do when I was back home. I, I watched church, you know, weekly and I prayed and, you know, my prayer looks is more so journaling and stuff because that's how I can get out my feelings and emotions. Um, but, you know, I was doing, I was doing enough to get by. And then when I make, when I came here, I had nothing. I was stripped away from every comfort and luxury that I had once held and I had to say like, okay, God, it's really just you and I, I have nothing else. And it took me getting to that point to be like, oh, all right. All right. I see you, big G. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't, we back. I'm back. Look, ah, you thought I left. I'm back. <laughs> um, no, but you know, it, it takes moments like that. And I'm, I'm so grateful for being able to be confronted with almost being homeless because it, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be where I am today and having the relationship with God that I have today, you know? Oh yeah. I, I'm, I seriously, I'm loving this and <laughs> I'm loving this because Thank you. when you talk and, and I'm again, going back with the Bible, the first thing I thought about was one, I thought about the prodigal son at first when you mentioned it mm -hmm. um, again, if you know, one knows had out with all the riches of his family, 
said, forget you, dad. I'm family. I'm doing all my own thing. Again, I'm just ad burden right now. Um, right. Just show me the money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> took all his stuff, spent it all on and lived this great life, went homeless. And to the point where he, when he found himself and realized what he was doing wrong and decided to then go back to his father. And then again, being robed. Um, and his father says, Hey, welcome back. You're not, you're not that case though. You right. when I thought oh, about it, you. it's more of a Joseph. And I say mm -hmm. Joseph in the old Testament and where again, left his family, um, his brother sold them. Um, he, pretty much lived in, in, in a well, in, in a sense, um, homeless uh, to the point where the king saw him and they took him and he became King Joseph. And when his right. friends saw him, then he became humble to himself and so on and so forth. Um, it's that we have to sometimes get out of our comfort zone. Right. Or if we don't get out of our comfort zone, something's going to happen to get out of our comfort zone. And right. that is either, again, going to either um, whoever decides to believe in God or the divine power, um, something greater than you saying, hey, guess what? It's great that you're in this, but you're better than this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to strip right. you from it. Right. And then when you get stripped from it, you're going to ask for help. Right. You're going to seek that divine power. And I'm going to show you who you really trust and who I really am. And then I'll really give you those riches that you really, truly deserve. Right, right. And that's what it Absolutely. came down to in, in a lot of our situations. I can tell you the truth. And uh, back in January 2nd, um, I was in a place that I was working at a, at a job. I was like, in 2012, I was working a job that I was like, no, it's not for me. I'm, I'm better than this. Right. Um, I literally closed up and um, I, uh, I was with the, the boss at the time. He walked out of the building. I'm like, oh, hold on. I forgot my bag upstairs, like a book, because I was, I was literally studying for school uh, mm -hmm. for a test. I was, those upcoming tests that was happening literally the day after. Um, I went upstairs, grabbed my book, and something just said, just pray. And I got down my knees and I prayed. And I'm just like, I'm better than this. Like, yeah, I, I'm way better than this, than where I am right now. Kid you not, January 4th, I got a phone call because I was I applied to a temp agency. I got a job at where I am right now. And that's 10 years wow. at a job where I am making more money than I was back then. But every day I wake up, I thank God for just making me be here. And some days he pulls me back saying, hey, remember that day right. where, you, right. where you prayed to me. Where, yeah. where you're at your lowest and you're at in my point at my in my eyes at the lowest where i thought it couldn't have got better than this where i was right right yeah oh, sorry could have got worse and it couldn't have got better to tell you true right it was, just, it was right. just like i it wasn't it was just i was just at a point like it was just a bad bad job i understand it was just a startup job but right. it was just it was just very very bad it wasn't right. worth it at the end of it and I, I'm not that person type of person just to sit there and do absolutely nothing. I need to, I need to grow. I need to, I'm, I'm, and it goes down to what you mentioned with the wind. Um, the, again, another thing I thought about was a tree that's planted and, and or, or that planted and the roots, it's how deep are your roots in yourself, in your faith and everything that right. you believe. Because if it's a shallow, if your roots are shallow and they're growing on top of the ground, as soon as the wind blows, you're going over. Oh yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Flood yeah. comes, you're gone. You're done. If the, <laughs> if the sun hits you, those roots right. are going to get dried up. You're not dug deep. And that's right. the biggest thing is what you mentioned. It's how deep are your roots are. Because again, when you felt that wind, that wind, if you weren't believing in God at that point, mm -hmm. if you the wind just would have been the wind. Right. The wind would have been, it would have been a wind, but it would have been a wind of destruction. Right. Versus a wind of, of change. And that's right. the difference. Oh, that's okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you hit that wind of change. And when you hit that wind of change, you felt that present. You felt that, you felt that, that calm. Right. Because despite right. everything, and you remember, again, I'm going back biblical. I love this. I remember <laughs> when Jesus was, was in the ship and then the wind, if you remember that. When oh, Jesus yeah. The yeah. Wind was going and stuff like that. And Jesus came on top and he said, peace be still. Right. And it was calm. We all oh. go through a wind. We all go, go through our storm. But we have to right. remember, one, are we anchored? And if we're anchored, we're okay. Right. Oh, so good. I love this. I love this I'm conversation. Loving I'm loving it. I'm loving this it, dude. so good. <laughs> this is good. This is good. I'm loving this. I'm loving this.
Um, anything else would you like to share? Because I'm not even sure if we can touch base for what we're actually going to talk about. But I'm actually okay. loving it too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think everyone kind of comes to that that moment. And I wanted people to be more aware of self-sabotaging maybe creeping up on you. Because we'll all get that you know, that game, um, I think it's called life, right? And, you know, where we're, we're playing and there's pieces on the chessboard or pieces on the board or whatever, and then boom, you have a decision to make. You can either start a family or you can go to college or you can do this or you can do that, right? And it's all these different moments and all these different forks of the road. Um, and if you are in a place where you don't have anything to hold on to or to believe in or you don't feel confident enough in your in yourself, you will choose to go back to the most comforting option. But that most comforting option may no longer serve you. So mm. what I try to do, I believe in vision boards and all that kind of stuff and really trying to see and describe the woman that I want to be in the future. And, you know, I look at my vision boards often and I say my affirmations and I make sure I'm in alignment with who it is that I'm trying to become and who it is that God wants me to become. But then when I look at my life, I can't be frustrated anymore that I'm having these types of experiences because the woman that I'm trying to grow and evolve into, she had to go through things like this. You know, Oprah didn't just wake up one day and become Oprah and have her own network and this and that, you know, all these things. She was fired from her first TV job. Now, if she would have just sulked in that and was like, you know what, I got fired. This obviously isn't for me. We wouldn't have all the beautiful creations she was able to make today. And so I think that that's something good what, that I do, especially when I'm in a season of, of, or when I'm in a moment of feeling like I need to self-sabotage because nothing looks the same. I go back and I look at either biblical stories or I look at, you know, documentaries or I read books and novels and things like that to help me realize that I'm not alone. And some of the most amazing stories that God has ever created came from moments where we had forks in the road and people decided to take a chance and live out on faith instead of their own fears. So self-sabotage is normal and it will come up. Insecurity is normal and it will come up. You will not feel like, you know, the dopest person every single day of your life. But as long as you keep reaffirming to yourself that and you know that there are other people who have, whose journeys have come from sometimes terrible experiences that reshaped the whole trajectory of their lives, you can really accomplish and overcome anything, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Okay. <laughs> um, thing that you mentioned as well. I'm actually starting. I finally started. Well, I'm gonna start uh, my vision board uh, this weekend. So I'm oh, just like, awesome! Okay. Congrats. I, I, I mean, it's it's something, and it's funny because I for the longest time, and I kid you not, like sometimes it's we we hear advice, mm -hmm. but we never take it, and we know it's good for you, but you're like, nah, it's okay. Right. It's not for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, just just get off with your mumbo jumbo, whatever. Right, right. I'd like. Because I knew about the vision board like six years ago. I'm just like, nah, it's right. okay. Now, <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but I guess it's just all the guests I've been talking to and a lot of coaches that I've been talking to as well. It's that get a vision board. I'm just like, why do I get, why right. do I need a vision board? And it's really is outlining who it's the vision board, what I've been meant to understand. It's who do you want to be or who do you right. want to become? And, it, and that's what I think it is. And we kind of go through that at a younger age when we make a collage in, in like art class or with stuff like that we throw right. all these ideas on onto and we make onto a board and we stick it on it and like this is what i love that i think was our, i guess in my opinion our first taste of a vision board but right. now it's really a vision board of like who do you want to become and it's never too late in life to create a vision board um in regards to that the other thing that you mentioned as well and based off of all this i was thinking about as well it's that imposter syndrome. And I wonder how much people nowadays, and I'm going back with, I'm, I'm going to tie it in with Oprah, what you mentioned as well, is how much of us, and honesty, is how much of us is killing our potential. How much people right. out there have this great potential of change that can yeah. do a lot of things in life, um, but they choose to, to not feel confident within themselves um, to accomplish that stuff. Because going back with Oprah, Oprah could have just said, like you mentioned, could have said, forget it. I'm just gonna go back mm -hmm. to whatever she was doing. Let's say uh, packing groceries. 
Right. Um, but then now Oprah's friend or someone that saw Oprah doing like, huh, I'm going to take her idea. So right. again, right. how much people are stealing your joy and stealing your success and stealing right. your blessings from you if you choose to hold back on it. And again, this is where mm -hmm. I'm tying back to the vision board and, to, and, and, and tying it back to the imposter syndrome is that it's real. These right. things are real, but we need to overcome those, overcome those things. So yeah, most definitely. Daisy on this, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm, I'm loving these conversations and Thank it's just, you. it's fantastic. It is honestly fantastic. Thank you um, so much. To be honest with you, I have nothing else for you because it's just, it's been golden nuggets after golden nuggets after golden nuggets. And I, I don't want to ruin this. I, I honestly don't want to ruin it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You mentioned, however, do you, um, you said you mentioned you, you're doing coaching right now. Yes. Yes. I'm doing coaching. I teach people how to start living their best lives as well. Um, and also how to get over their own fears and, and embrace their own confidence and power. Um, I think sometimes we think being confident has a negative connotation or it means that you're no longer humble. Um, and so we'd rather just kind of put ourselves in a box and, and not chase after the things that we want for fear of failure or fear of who does she think she is? You know, who does she think she is to do that, right? Um, and so I kind of help people with that. I also do venting sessions because I know that not everyone likes the idea of therapy. So I allow my clients to just call and they can vent for 60 minutes or they can get advice with it if they want and then just go on about their business. Um, I also have a book out on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, Target and Walmart called Worthy I Am, a journal for the rediscovery of self, which is basically just helping people get back in alignment with their self-care and their mental health. You know, the world is crazy and it's changing every day. Um, so being able to give some people time to actually take time for their mental health is really good. Um, and then I also recently just, um, we're in the beta testing program right now, but I actually just started my own mental health and wellness um, television network on Roku. So yeah, so we have some, some big things in store. God's definitely been good and um, I can't complain about that, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing right now. That is amazing. That is truly Thank amazing. You. Um, Thank you so much. I assume you have a website. So what's your website? Mm -hmm. So uh, my website is comparisoncoach.com. Um, also worthyiamjournal.com as well for the book. Thank you so much. Daisy Thank Anna. Thank you, David, for having it's me. Been, it's been a pleasure. And we're, we'll be talking a lot. Don't worry about that. Awesome. <laughs> All right, two comments. Exactly. Soon. Exactly. <laughs> awesome, awesome. awesome. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much.